Part 5, the 19th century, also an era we often refer to as the Romantic Era, with a capital R. Now, let's be clear. It ain't about Valentine's Day. It ain't candies and flowers and sweet lovey-dovey crap. That is not what Romantic means in this case, right? The Romantic Era, the 19th century, really ought to refer to an era of revolution. Right. If you remember when I talked about Beethoven being a revolutionary composer and how he changed what a symphony could be with uh, Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, with his Fifth Symphony, um, that continues <clears throat> into the 19th century. There are major revolutions that happen. The French Revolution. This isn't just France gaining its independence. This is France overthrowing the monarchy right? Taking those kings and queens, right? In particular, the queen who says, well, let them eat cake. Her people are starving and she's so out of touch. She's like, well, just let them eat cake. That's what I have. She's an idiot. Um, they take them out to the guillotine and chop their heads off, right? So the French Revolution is massive. It kind of upsets all of Europe. All of the monarchies start to topple just like those heads coming from the guillotine, right? Into the baskets. Um, all of the monarchies start to fall. Democracies start popping up. You've also got the Industrial Revolution. This is a major impact uh, to the world, right? We're becoming more globalized. Think about it. If you wanted to send a letter to someone to tell them about your day, they'd get it three or four months later, even if it was just going to the next uh, country over, right? Or if you wanted to travel from, say, Germany to, I don't know, England, it could take you months by a stagecoach, right? It's incredibly uh, incredible what happens with the Industrial Revolution in terms of steam engines, right? Trains. Travel now becomes something that even is incredibly slow by today's standards was so fast in the 19th century. Very famous uh, German conductor and composer named Richard Strauss. He came on a visit in the late 1800s to New York and had to take a train to Boston for a concert. And he got off the train and said, never again. He was scared to death because that train was going 35 miles per hour. Anyway, the Industrial Revolution expands our ability to communicate, to share news, to visit uh, exotic and faraway lands, as well as just creating a merchant class, right? We're able to build things faster, better, quicker, make more money. And so the middle class becomes an important consumer of the arts. Uh, so during the 19th century, um, in this romantic era, uh, if we want to call it that, artists are really fixated on themselves, their individual emotions and passions. It's all about the self. It's all about me, right? Um, they're inspired by um, poets like um, Keats, who writes a really famous poem to a Grecian urn, looking backwards, but also looking forwards at the same time. Or Lord Byron, my love... Uh, I forgot what that poem goes like. Robert Burns, sorry, there we go. Robert Burns, my love is like a red, red rose. There we go, Scottish poet. Um, they're also inspired by the gothic dark uh, short stories of Edgar Allan Poe, our own hero here in America. Think the raven or the telltale heart, right? Uh, you've also got Sigmund Freud, who talks about investigating your dreams, right? And what you want to do with your mom or your dad, those weird things. But it makes people start to think outside of the box, right? So artists are really inspired during this area, during this era by their individual passions. Nature is a huge impact. Um, dreams, the other world, the underworld, the spiritual, the dark, the grisly, all of those kinds of things. I mean, think about it. Frankenstein was written during this era. Um, so these are the kinds of stories that we'll be experience, uh, exploring, the kinds of composers we'll be exploring, as well as some other isms like exoticism, writing music that sounds like it comes from a different uh, country or a faraway place, or nationalism, where you're celebrating your own home country's music. So we'll be going through a lot of composers and a lot of strange sounds uh, during this section, but I think a lot of sounds that you'll recognize, a lot of pieces that maybe you didn't think you knew, but you actually do.